What do you think is the bare minimum you need to spend to get a functional and sleek looking wireless gaming keyboard and mouse setup that doesn't suck? I've challenged myself to create the best budget gaming combo that I could for under $100, and that includes mouse, keyboard, and mouse pad to see how close it comes to my current favorite setup, which costs over $500 from one of the biggest names in gaming. Starting off with my everyday premium setup, I've got what I consider to be the trifecta from Razer. The Deathstalker V2 Pro keyboard is $250, the Basilisk V3 Pro is over $150, and the Strider Chroma is a whopping $130 for a grand total of about $530. And let's be honest, the Razer tax is definitely real, but what sets this setup apart from basically everything else that I've ever tested is how well everything syncs together. And not just in terms of lighting, but also with its reactive effects with the games I play most like Overwatch 2. The integrations and its vast support for third-party hardware like these Yeelight Cubes 2 quite literally take the experience to a whole other level. At first, I wasn't even sure I could make $100 work to get everything I needed, let alone recreate all the things I love about my Razer setup. In fact, I hadn't even heard of Red Dragon when I first began this challenge about a month ago, but they consistently came up as a top-rated brand with thousands of five-plus star reviews on most of their products. After some research, I decided on the Red Dragon K530W RGB Pro, the Red Dragon M810W RGB Pro, and what I can only call a generic large RGB gaming mouse pad, which is $10. Setting the benchmark for what I wanted, the V3 Pro is the most ergonomic mouse I've ever tested. Although the M810 looks nearly identical, it feels slightly smaller overall, especially towards its back where nearly my entire palm sits on the razor, but drags more on the mouse pad when I'm using the Red Dragon M810. In terms of performance though, when I'm in a game and I have both set to the same DPI, which is usually between four and 6,000, I can't tell as much of a difference. Now, when picking them both up, I will say the MA-10 does feel slightly lighter. This may make it better suited if you lift your mouse up a lot for quick flicks. One thing to note though, and this could just be because of my specific unit, I'm not sure how well you can see this on camera, but this part of the underside pad is starting to peel up. I've only been using it for about a month now, and that's rather quick. So it does tend to drag against a mouse pad, which isn't great, though the rest of these do seem okay for now. Again, maybe this was down to bad luck, but given the less than perfectly smooth and uniform look of those other pads, I think this is a quick giveaway that Red Dragon has made some cost-saving sacrifices. The Razer still has a much nicer and more substantial feel in the hand. The Basilisk uses textured plastic on its top and rubberized sides, which feel much more premium compared to the Dragon's smooth, hard plastic body. And even with that geometric pattern on its sides, the Dragon doesn't offer that same locked-in grip that you get with the Razer. And when I'm lifting the Dragon up or I'm flicking quickly, it's much easier for me to lose hold underneath, especially by my ring finger. I've also become a big fan of Razer's quick switch button for enabling free spin or tactile scrolling. And it's one of those things that I haven't fully appreciated until I move to a mouse that doesn't have it. Surprisingly though, in quite a few ways, the M810's lighting is actually a little bit better than the Razer's. For starters, its scroll wheel is semi-transparent, giving off a more pronounced effect compared to the Basilisk, which can more easily be blocked by your index finger when using it. Similarly, the main lights of the Red Dragon are on its top sides rather than underneath as with the Razer. While this won't give you that nice underglow against your mouse pad, when you're actually using the mouse, it's far easier to see. That said, and I'll get into this, brightness and visibility are only one half of the story. Moving on to the keyboards. For obvious reasons, it's a little bit more difficult to give these two a more direct comparison. Both are fully hot swappable. The Deathstalker uses low profile optical switches, whereas the K530 uses traditional keycaps. With the Red Dragon, you can choose between brown, red, or blue switches, depending on your style. And it also supports three and five pins. Basically everything else at this price point only supports three pin, so that's nice to see. The K530 obviously is a 60% keyboard, meaning it doesn't have a function row or a numpad, while the Deathstalker V2 Pro, of course, is a full-size keyboard. 
Yes, this does come with its share of limitations, but for a lack of a better word, this smaller size has grown on me. I rarely use that other 40% on my Razer keyboard, so for the most part, I didn't really feel like I was missing out on much. The dedicated function row was less important to me, but it wasn't until I used the K530 for typing, especially with a script, that I quickly realized how important the use of the arrow keys were to make edits. And while this wasn't an issue for gaming, this does rule the Dragon out from becoming my main daily keyboard. But on the flip side, this is actually a great size and compact enough to just easily take on the go. Razer also sells the smaller Black Widow V3 Mini 65%, which looks to be about the perfect size for me without much compromise. But as you can imagine, I'm just waiting for them to release a white version like this, so fingers crossed we see one soon. In addition to its 2.4 GHz, the Red Dragon also supports two different connections via Bluetooth, which happens to be one shy short of the Desk Docker, which supports three with quick access using these buttons. That's actually pretty important for me as someone who uses a lot of devices with just one keyboard. Both keyboards support direct connections via USB-C, which also recharges their batteries. And then just as with the M810, the RGB effects found here are also really impressive. In fact, and maybe it's because of the larger letter cutouts that we find on the K530, but side by side with the Razer, it actually looks a little bit brighter. The thing I quickly realized though is Red Dragon uses two separate apps for customizing their mice and keyboard. Despite being the same brand, there doesn't currently appear to be a way to synchronize their lighting effects. And while Razer's Chroma lighting integrations aren't as impressive if you only buy one of their products, as soon as you pair one of their mice and keyboards together, it's a completely different story. Search RGB mousepad and you'll quickly realize that except for Razer and Cooler Master, basically everything else is the same generic model, and that includes this one that I bought. Now, funny enough, it's this mousepad that sparked my interest in making this entire video. I originally bought this about six months ago on a whim when I saw it for just $10. And that got me thinking, if this mouse pack could be so good, yet so cheap, what other affordable gaming hardware was I missing out on? Although it's about a third smaller than the Strider, it gives you about 90% of the experience. The RGB lighting is just about as bright and smooth, although it only has its built-in lighting effects including breathing, flashing, and individual colors, I think it still looks great and can easily pass for a much more expensive mouse pad given how impressive its effects are. That said, if you're thinking of or you're already invested in Team Green, the Razer Strider mouse pad is the icing on the cake. This is easily one of the most expensive and premium mouse pads that you can buy. Unlike your choice in mouse or keyboard, a mouse pad arguably has the smallest impact on your gaming experience. So you might think, why bother spending so much on one? Just as with pairing the mouse and keyboard, the Strider is what brings the Razer experience together. So when the three are in sync together, it's pretty awesome. But credit where it's due, even when the budget option is set to its breathing mode, it still complements any setup, including the Razer, very well. And considering how most dumb mouse pads cost as much, if not way more, it's pretty hard to pass up on this. To that end though, the last point I really want to drive home, and arguably the biggest thing that sets Razer apart from everything else and makes it personally my favorite, is its ecosystem. Yes, their hardware is great as we've covered, but their software is even better. Razer Synapse offers simple yet highly customizable adjustments, not just for its own products, but also for the growing number of supported integrations with games and other hardware, including my Yeelights. And unsurprisingly, being much smaller, Red Dragon doesn't support this. That said, I was half hoping that choosing Red Dragon for both the mouse and keyboard would offer some level of synchronized lighting effects between the two. And again, given how bright, smooth, and otherwise impressive its lighting effects are, I think this is really a missed opportunity. So, what's the deal? While the budget setup impresses with its core performance and affordability, Razer's products just feel better in hand, and they knock it out of the park with their mature and powerful ecosystem experience. Don't get me wrong, you're getting some excellent hardware for $100, which will be miles ahead of any traditional mouse and keyboard but Team Green offers the complete experience that continues to only get better as they expand their support for more devices and games. But which setup would you go for? Let me know in the comments and suggest other head-to-head -head showdowns that you'd like to see in the future. 
For more tech news and reviews, follow us at Tom's Guide. You can also follow me for a more behind the scenes look into how I make these videos and other tech that I'm reviewing currently. And until the next one, I'll catch you later.